Uh, okay, if you guys say so. So I guess this is old school RuneScape veteran tries RS3, which is definitely different than this video. Okay, let's do this. To be honest, I'm not really a big fan of the music changes right off the bat, but we'll deal with it. Um, give me a minute to create my character and figure out how to do Iron Man mode. Okay, so full disclosure, wait, is this, this is Tutorial Island? I was just about to say that I'm not completely new to RS3. The last time I really played was maybe 2016, 2017, something like that. So it's definitely been a while and there's a lot of content I'm missing. But last time I played, I'm pretty sure that Tutorial Island wasn't in the game. So this is really interesting. I, I, I like that. Um, I understand that RS3 is a different game, but I like kind of keeping certain old nostalgic elements in there. Maybe that's not a popular opinion, but, uh, you know, like the music changes, I wasn't really a big fan of. I like the classic RuneScape music. It's just so good. No need to change it. So I had to lower my graphic settings to basically minimum to be able to get some decent frames because I'm playing on a potato, but that'll be changing very, very soon. Uh, so I'm looking forward to actually kind of experiencing what the graphics look like. Also, just to be clear, right off the bat, um, if you're one of my old old school RuneScape viewers, uh, this isn't going to be just like a shit on RS3 video. Um, if I enjoy this, I could really see myself making a series out of it. Um, I'm just going to try to experience the game. I'm going to try to look at it with fresh eyes and look at it as a different game entirely rather than a different version of the RuneScape I know. As all, although I said there's a few like nostalgic things that like the music that I'm not really a big fan of changing, um, I still do overall see this as a different game. And I think that if you want to enjoy this game as an old school RuneScape player, that's the mindset that you have to approach it with is looking at it as a different game entirely. So maybe I space barred a little bit too hard, but I have no clue what's going on here with this new mining and smithing. I'm kind of just following the prompts, but I don't really understand what I'm actually doing. Whoa, cutscene. Uh, Jagex, to be honest, I think you might be overhyping Berthorpe a little bit. <laughs> but uh, that's cool to see, though. It's a little thing to draw on new players. Let's see. Wants me to talk to Turiel. Does it want me to start Slayer right now? I'm like level one everything. Um, I don't know what the hell this uh, achievement path is thing, but I'm, whatever it is, I'm not really interested. Actually, I'm not interested in that, but I would like to see what's new content wise. Where's the bosses tab? So like I said, I used to play in like 2016, 2017. Um, I remember Telos coming out. I think, I think I killed Telos to like, wow, 429 quest points. That's insane. And these uh, quests are kind of ordered, organized in a weird way. But I want to find the, the boss tab. There's like a tab with all the boss information. Hold on. There it is. Found it. And there is a lot of bosses in here I don't know. The ambassador I've never killed before. I, I do kind of know who this is. I think from watching uh, a friend's uh, RS3 Iron Man series. Araxor I obviously killed. Not a ton. I never liked Araxor much. This guy is new to me. This guy, I think this is from another one of those elite dungeons or whatever. Um, I, I have a little bit of info from watching some people on YouTube, but I haven't killed any of these before. Let's see, Zuck. Oh, they have Zuck in RS3 now. I can get my... It doesn't drop an Inferno cape, apparently. Let's see. Virago, absolute classic from back then. Now, that was an old one. I think that came out like right after RS3 came out, right? Um, I killed a little bit of Virago, I think. Not a lot, though. Um, I used to kill a lot of Nex. Telos. Yep, I think I killed Telos to like 100% or something. Never got any drops or anything. I think Telos actually came out, I think, like right around the time that I stopped playing. Because um, that was one of my more recent RS3 memories, is killing Telos. Uh, but there is a lot here that I am not familiar with. And it's I think it's going to be really fun to... Ah, Beastmaster, of course. Um, I remember killing Beastmaster. The uh, abilities were super powerful. At, at least at the time, they were like super meta. Um, and I killed a lot of necks back in the day, actually, for money. Uh, but now we're doing Iron Man.
All right, we're already getting started off with Daily Scape right off the bat. Uh, dailies were never really my favorite part of RS3. Um, it just kind of seemed like this busy work that you had to do to stay competitive, you know. Um, but they're really efficient, obviously, so might as well get those going because that's what you do every day on RS3. Um, and honestly, with how fast this early game XP will be, I think, I'm not even sure if like questing is the meta way to start the game or not. But since, like, if we're assuming that I'm going to go for comp or something someday on this account, I'm just going to play this like, I don't know, I would any RS account. Um, if we're assuming that you're going to go for those higher goals, you're going to need to do all these quests eventually anyway sometime. So you might as well do them in the early game when they give you the most benefit. Um, you guys can correct me in the comments if that's maybe not the right approach. But that's what I'm going to go for. And I'm going to kind of play it like I would an old school account and try kind of do a bunch of early game quests to try to get a lot of uh, levels early on from quest XP after I do the dailies, of course. So I got those out of the way. Just finishing up the crafting one right here. Uh, I don't think these give XP. I don't I, Honestly, if they don't give XP, I don't know what the point is. I know they give you like keys for a normal account. But these don't, like, well, if you look, they don't give me any. And I have three more right away. Uh, that's weird. Uh, I guess I'll just go do those. I don't know. I thought these give you XP, and then there's only a certain amount you could do per day. But I guess I have more of them now. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll do these, I guess. Maybe it's like a extended tutorial type thing. I'll see what's going on. Okay, so apparently I needed to do those basic challenges to unlock my daily challenges. So let's do these and get some gains. So apparently you can claim these from the interface now, but I'm going to go back to my old gnome lady friend uh, for nostalgia's sake. We got some crafting XP. All right, let's just space bar through this. Let's see. We got some levels, right? That's, that's what dailies do for you. Big shout out to my friend Luna of Foxy over here for some quick tips. Everyone in this starting area has actually been super friendly, um, which was actually surprising because in my memory from, well, back in high school or whatever, uh, everyone in RS3 was always super toxic, but maybe that was just like the high level community. I don't know. So my friend Luno Foxy told me to do this quest. There's no requirements and it's right over here in Taverly, Tav Taverly so I can do it right away. Gives me some lamps, which I assume means XP. Uh, so let's do that and see what this is all about. Violet is blue. This quest is a little trippy because it feels like they turned a Christmas event into a quest and it's May. But it seems alright so far. Well, that was a really cute quest. Uh, the music kind of reminds me of Stardew Valley music, to be honest. Uh, apparently there's a second one, so let's do that. I don't think it has any other requirements either. Yay, we saved Christmas in May. <laughs> Again, this one felt... Uh, Kind of like a Christmas event rather than a quest, but it was cute. It was fun. So for the last quest, I got three lamps of 1,000 XP, and I got three more. So is it going to be another 1,000? Because like 1,000 XP into any skill in the very early game is actually super powerful when you're talking about like uh, questing up your skills because there's a lot of skills that don't have a lot of quests that give XP, so you can kind of boost up some of them. Um, otherwise, I think I put the other ones into Herblore just because Herblore is really good on Iron Man. And uh, I might do that again. Oh, this one gives 4,000. Oh, shit. I think I should think about this. That's insane. If this is old school, that would be so broken. Uh, I'm going to think about this, maybe do a little research and come back to make my choice. Okay, so after spending time on the Quest XP Rewards wiki page, I think that I want to throw one of these into construction because there's a lot of quests that require, like, say, 15 to 20 construction, um, but there's not a lot of quests that you can just up construction right away, right? Um, and I kind of want to be able to just bang out a bunch of quests without having to train skills in between. And that brings us up to level 19 right away. That's so insane. Um I think I want to throw one, I mean, Herblore is always good, but I think I want to throw one into farming because, again, it's a similar thing. There's not a lot of, like, at least in old school, early, early game farming is really slow. That brings us up to level 20, damn. Um, 
And it'll be nice to get that up. I think I can do Garden of Tranquility now, for example. Um, and I'll throw the last one in Herblore. Herblore's just always good to have on an Iron Man, right? Um, and I just found out that Herblore goes up to 120 now. So I got a lot of Herblore XP I need to get. Uh, so I think I can use all the help I can get because that is uh, an insane amount of XP. And apparently that's not like a virtual level like some of the other skills. Uh, but you can actually level up Herblore to 120 and there's unlocks after 99. Which I think is interesting. I think with the XP rates that uh, RS3 has, I think that's a good approach to take. I I'd like to see the game have more and more content, you know. Caught you off guard a bit, a bit there, didn't I? Um, I was walking over to Lumbridge because I can't teleport there yet, apparently, and I thought I'd bang out Ernest the Chicken while I'm here. I keep you on your toes somehow. And that is Cook's Assistant, the, the quest that probably every everyone who's ever played RuneScape has done. Absolute classic. And while I was over here, I noticed the god statue on the other side of the river, and that reminded me it's another monthly thing that I need that I need to do. I believe it gives construction and prayer XP, but all these D&Ds and stuff, they're time locked, but they're super powerful. Um, so unlocking and them, unlocking them and getting them going as soon as possible is, is pretty important. Uh, monthly reset is, uh, in about a week. So I need to get on that. And the sooner I can get to those, the better, but I need to do priest in peril to do the one in Canifis. Uh, which I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get done in the next week because I'm going to be moving and stuff like tomorrow. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get, get to that. Now before doing God statues, I'd like to get a few prayer levels. So that's why we did the rest is restless ghost. Um, and also that it's a prerequisite for like almost every other game, other, almost every other quest in the game. Um, so that way we can get some more XP from the God statues when we get to that. Oh my god, I totally forgot about this quest. This came out like, uh, was it 2012 or something? I just I realized I just closed the menu. Uh, right before like RS3 came out and they were kind of trying to introduce the combat trial triangle, I believe. So that you had to use like the different styles. Uh, wow, this is nostalgic in a different kind of way than like playing old school is. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that was super nostalgic. I like how... RS3 kind of hypes up this early game content with cutscenes and stuff like that cutscene in Burtharp. Like even in the early game, it kind of it feels like you're making an impact on the world in a way. Uh, it, it's neat. It's a different experience than old school where it feels like you're just kind of how do I how do I say like you're kind of running through the motions or just going through the motions in the early game. Uh, where I imagine as like a completely new player. You know, this would be satisfying and gratifying in a way from the early game. And we get some XP lamps, of course. Or a XP lamp. I think it gets us to, like, level 2 at each of our combats. Whatever. So it took me a second to find this guy. I believe when raids first came out, uh, you could teleport to Mascap, like, pretty much directly. Or at least to the... Ah, the Tusca thing, yeah. Uh, there was this, like, world event, I think, where you unlock these these abilities... Um, no, just Tusk is Wrath. So I need to come back and do this mini game to unlock that at some point. The rest of these I can get from God Wars, I believe. So I need to come back and that's a really powerful ability for Slayer and stuff. But I'm here to do Nemi Forest. The reason why I want to get Nemi Forest going right away is that it's another time lock thing. I'm trying to kind of remember all these time lock things that I need to do. Because they take time and you can't just grind them out, obviously. And Mascap Reputation is, is one of those things. Uh, there's a few like one-time bonuses you can get if I remember right. And I believe that the Mascap abilities and stuff are still really powerful. Uh, I'm not sure you can leave a comment. It, they may be worthless at this point, I don't know. Uh, but figure that might as well start getting this going. You know, you get a very low amount of reputation per day. So being able to do this every day is really nice. And as you see, you get some prayer XP, some farming XP every day. Uh, which reminds me, I need to get started on Menaphos. Because I think Menaphos is another time locked thing. It's, these time locked mechanics, were I, I'm not a favor of them to be honest. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. This is certainly not the Rune Mysteries that I remember. I popped over here quick to do Rune Mysteries because uh, 
I was coming over to do the quest that I need for Menaphos, and I figured this was on the way, and I'd get a little bit of uh, runecrafting. Or I, I don't think you need this to unlock runecrafting in RS3, uh, but I figured I'd get it out of the way, but this ended up being way longer of a quest than, than I remember. There we go. It wasn't even done when I thought it was, but uh, I'm, actually, I'm really not a fan of them reworking these old quests. You know, these old quests kind of had a little charisma to them. I understand why they did it, and I do believe that this uh, this new Rune Mysteries quest kind of uh, fits RS3 better and fits like a modern MMO better, and it feels like you're having more of an impact impact on the game from from early on. So I get why they did it, but it still just hurts a little bit. Uh, let's get the other quests out of the way. I need for priest, uh, not priest in peril, Menaphos. So this apparently was the rework of Priest in Peril, and I really liked it actually. Uh, it was pretty interesting and a lot more fun than Priest in Peril in my experience. But to be fair, Priest in Peril was probably the least nostalgic of all the OG OG uh, RuneScape quests to me, and I really enjoyed it. But there's one more that we have to do to unlock Priest in Peril. Excuse me, Menaphos. How many times am I going to use the wrong word for Menaphos in this video? I think we're up to three so far. I was wrong. There was two more quests that I need to do before Menaphos. Uh, they're pretty quick ones. This one was super annoying, trying to click on the little uh, sparkly bugs and stuff, especially since I'm in, like, minimum detail. Uh, but we got that out of the way. One more. Oh, I was going to go to bed, but this one looked like it was a really quick one on the wiki. So we got that out of the way. We got some XP. But most importantly, we got access to Menaphos, which I'm not super familiar with all the content in Menaphos. I believe this came out right around the time that I stopped playing RS3. So I, I'm a little aware of it. I know there's that some daily things that you do with reputation. And I know that you need a buttload of reputation for certain things. Uh, so that's why I wanted to get it out of the way and get that started. Um, I believe there's a... Yeah, so these, that's right, there's unlocks for each faction, and then there's unlocks for, like, Menaphos in general. But I think the ports is what I want to do, because I've heard from watching YouTube and stuff that the Menaphos fishing is, is pretty good for food for Iron Men. So I think that's what I'm going to put my reputation to, and I'm going to try to do my dailies quick, and then go to bed probably. So this is the thing I was thinking of, the Soul Obelisk. Uh, this gives you a bunch of reputation, some runecrafting XP. Um, I'm not getting hardly any runecrafting XP because I'm like three runecrafting or something. But, and I, I don't really have any food other than these uh, like sardines or whatever that I don't even remember where I got these. Okay, and it just expired. But the, you, there's this friends chat that calls out what worlds they spawn on. And you can do a certain amount of this for reputation per day. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do this every day. I don't know if this is as important as the other dailies. But regardless, it's another time lock daily thing that we got unlocked. So we can start doing that kind of in the background. And it'll be good to get that building up over time. I'm sure the late game accounts or the late game RS3 player in me will thank me. So this is the last daily that I wanted to get started on. Uh, at least back when I played, this was super meta to do. Uh, it was a lot of divination XP, but I'm level one divination right now, so I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to get. But divination's really important, uh, especially with the uh, release of invention. At least when I played, when around the time that invention came out, uh, you needed a ton of the divine energies for uh, invention charge and stuff like that so getting a high divination level is really important and back then this was the best way to do it so you guys can let me know in the comments if there's maybe a better way to do divination but i believe you can get 200 points a day unless they changed it so i'm going to see how many i can get i i'm only level one so the amount of points i can get is pretty limited but we'll see how this goes wow i can't believe i was able to get 100 points which is the max you can get in one game. I didn't know that was... Whoa, that's a lot of div XP. 17 from one cash. So if we can keep going on those, like, we'll be getting up there pretty pretty good. 
but I didn't know I could get 100 points at level one um, because I could only do the, the one point actions, but I had that world to myself, to be fair. And we also got the headgear, so that's cool because that's the XP boosting set, I believe, right? Yeah, so those are cool to collect. I think that's going to be it for this episode, and I'm going to confidently call it next episode because I'm having a lot of fun. I know I said that in my other video that I wasn't going to be coming back to RuneScape, but I think old school RuneScape and RS3 are very different things. Maybe that's just the addict in me talking, but there's certainly a whole lot of stuff that I, I don't know. When I play RS3, I feel like I'm kind of exploring again, even though I was looking back editing this and I realized I was kind of playing efficiently, uh, maybe at least what I thought was efficiently. But there's so much new content and I'm really having fun with it. And it's hard for me to call this like there's so much new content. It's hard for me to look at it like like the old runescape that I know so know and love. But I'm having fun with it regardless and I want to play more. So if you guys want to see more, you know, leave us a, uh, leave a like, subscribe because um, I think I'm going to be up and uploading more of these episodes regardless because I'm just having really a lot of fun playing this game and it feels like a fresh experience to me even though there's certain things that I recognize everything is so different even though I did play RS3 before that was over five years ago and it just everything still feels very different so yeah subscribe if you want to see more when I was kind of doing research for this video and or I guess when I kind of got inspired to do this video I realized that there's really not that much RS3 content out there I know there's not that many people that play compared to other MMOs, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. So if you guys want to tag along and uh, tag along for the journey, subscribe and watch the future videos.